Hi, welcome back. Today, we're gonna talk through some new makeup launches. I have not done a video like this in an eternity. And to be fully transparent, I actually was planning to film a different video today. And I have just been feeling kind of in a funk today. And even the last few days, I think part of it is that it has rained every single day in New York for like the last few weeks and like it's gonna continue to rain. And I don't think that's just New York. I think a lot of us are getting that right now. And I've been in a bit of a funk and I just like could not get into filming the video that I originally had scheduled. So I'm like, you know what? Let's talk about some new launches. That just seemed like a lot more of a fun option today. But that does mean I feel like my takes on these launches might be a little bit sassier than normal. But um, you've been warned, let's jump in. Okay, let's start with the full like Barbie segment. The Barbie movie is about to come out. I'm very excited about it. Let me know if you're planning to watch it. I'm pretty pumped. I have been, I'm not gonna lie. I have been really enjoying all of the pink everything, all the Barbie themed everything. And sometimes I feel like a lot of collabs, you know, we take it too far. This is one that I don't mind. I'm like, I don't even care that every single makeup brand and even beyond makeup, every single brand is doing a Barbie collection right now. I'm kind of here for it. So the one that I really, really love is the one from NYX. I will say what I love is just like the concept of it, the packaging, the theme. Does like, do any of the actual products intrigue me even a little bit now? The thing that I'm actually the most interested in that I had in my Ulta cart the other day. I took out, I was back and forth because I did just make an Ulta order for some new drugs for makeup for hopefully Friday's video if that order arrives in time. But the product that I kept going back and forth on, I'm like, should I buy this? The flip phone, that little flip phone mirror. Why do I want that so bad? There's like something nostalgic about it to me. I used to have a little pink flip phone. I never had the razor which is what I think this is trying to emulate. I know my mom had the razor, she had a green one, and I was always so jealous, but I had just like a little pink flip phone. And I think that's so precious to have that as a mirror. What was holding me back though is the NYX logo on it, which I know is kind of inevitable for that to be there because it is a collaboration with NYX, but I wanted them to launch that just saying Barbie. Like you can have NYX kind of like small off in the corner, but it was throwing me off that there was this like big Barbie thing or big NYX name on there. Honestly, the other launches though, uh, my guess, my guess would be that none of these are probably that high of quality. I am always a little bit hesitant about purchasing collaborations like this because a lot of times a lot of the money is going into obviously the collab, but also like the packaging part of it. And it's, it usually seems like the makeup is very much an afterthought. So these are things I would buy if you're only like viewing them as kind of as merch and less so as makeup that will probably perform well because even though I haven't tried them, my guess would be that they won't. I could be wrong though. Um, Kitsch has the very cute Barbie set. Now this is something that I think makes a lot more sense because with the makeup set from NYX, it's like, it feels very merch-like and like I said, the actual product and formulation feels a little bit of an afterthought, but I think it makes more sense to collaborate with a brand that really specializes in hair accessories like this, like Kitsch does. So I do have all of these actually, they did send them to me. And this little like three clip set, the little flower one in there I've been wearing so much lately. I think this is cute. This is something that makes sense as a collaboration. I think it was well executed. Also so random Moon, which is a Kendall Jenner's like um, toothbrush oral hygiene brand. They collaborated with Barbie. This is very cute, like I think uh, maybe the target market for this is like a child because it's a Barbie toothbrush. But even as an adult, I'm like, you know, I could vibe with this Barbie electric toothbrush. I think that is very, very cute. That being said, do I need any of these? No. What I'm more excited about is like going to actually watch the movie, but I think these are fun even though I likely will not purchase anything. Okay, new from e.l.f. I can't say I'm too excited about this, but I do see why a lot of people would and probably will be very excited about the new liquid, li liquid poreless putty primer. So I do like the Poreless Putty Primer. I feel like it's grown on me over the years, but it's not necessarily like an everyday primer for me. The e.l.f. primer that I'm using on the most frequent rotation is the Power Grip, because that's just the one that I find gives me good hydration and grip and longevity. If I was already like the biggest fan of the Poreless Putty Primer, this might intrigue me a bit more. I think this is just them continuing to kind of attempt to dupe Tatcha because the Poreless Putty Primer was originally intended to be very similar to the Tatcha one, and I know Tatcha has a liquid version of this, so I feel like this launch kind of seemed inevitable. It's really been the year of like 
elf duping everyone. I mean, everyone has been duping everyone, but elf especially. They've been like pretty shameless about it. But this makes sense because the Poreless Putty Primer has already been so, uh, so successful for them. It's led to all the Poreless Putty bronzers and blushes. They just launched Poreless Putty color correctors for your under eyes. So this makes sense to me. Personally, I'm not interested in it, but I do feel like, I could see a lot of people liking this. Will I try it out? Maybe solely for review if a lot of you requested it or wanted to see it or if I was doing like an elf wrap up for 2023. You know, if I had a reason to buy this for a video, I would, but it's not something that would tempt me otherwise, you know? Okay, in the vein of duping, let's discuss this from Hard Candy. This has been a pretty controversial launch. This is, uh, these are lip glosses or like lip oils. And I feel like I was really sleeping on Hard Candy for years there, but lately I have been discovering some favorites within the brand and like I'm excited about upcoming launches. So these are called the Glostopia Lip Repair Oils. They reach out for $8 a piece. The comments on Trend Mood are all saying, oh, this looks like rare beauty or pleasing. Both brands have similar components with the little ball on the top. Now, it's interesting to me that these are receiving so much criticism, but we've seen a lot of other brands shamelessly dupe other products and they don't get as much criticism. I don't know if this is partially because a lot of people have such an affinity to Rare Beauty as a brand and they really love that brand. I don't know if that's it or what. Do I think it was inspired by that? It seems like it probably was, or maybe inspired by one of the two brands. Honestly though, would I have been excited about this launch if it was the exact same packaging without the little ball on the top? Also, yes. So I don't, I can't say I feel too strongly either way, but let me know your thoughts down below. I'm definitely interested to hear. Also, let me know if you'd like me to test these out. I'm pretty curious about this formulation, especially because I have been getting a lot more excited about hard candy. Okay, something that I don't understand, and I had to watch so many videos before this video so we could talk about this from NYX. This is their Kush Brow Shadow Stick. So when I saw it, at first from this angle, I was like, oh, is that supposed to be like a triangular brow tip? You know, we see a lot of brands launch those. That's not my favorite shape for a brow pencil. I still prefer just a nice old micro brow tip, but I know a lot of people prefer that more triangular applicator. So at first that's what I thought this was. No, this is just like round, flat, basically like a shadow stick, but for your eyebrows. And they say it's pretty adaptable because you could kind of turn it on its side to make more hair-like strokes. I'm using hair leg strokes very loosely here because even the ones they were showing still looked more thick and pronounced than I would want my brow product to look, but that is definitely more of a preference based thing. But they also say you can lay it flat and kind of just go through the brows to kind of like fill them in in a very not so defined, kind of bushy, undone type of way. Now, maybe I'm not the right audience for this because I don't have eyebrows, okay? I draw these on from scratch. Some days I draw them on better than others, but I am having to rely on my brow products to do a lot of work. And I feel like this product could be so wonderful for someone that already has amazing brows and just needs to like go in, touch up a little bit. You know, I could see that being like the audience for this and enjoying it. But I'm, I'm putting a lot of work in doing my brows. Surprisingly lately, I never thought I would say this, but I'm like in my dip brow era. I know, I'm like, almost a decade too late, not really. I'm like probably like six years behind the trend. And funny enough, I did not used to like dip brow, but lately that has been like my main thing I've been using to do my eyebrows because I ran out of my brow pencil. And that was just the thing like in my backup drawer, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll use this because I don't have an, another brow pencil. So I have to use this until I buy a new one. Well, ever since I started using that, I'm like, maybe I won't buy a new one. Maybe I'm just gonna be a dip brow girly because I've been using it to draw like little hair-like strokes throughout the brow. I've been kind of reaching for it in the same way that I reach for a brow marker to just draw on the strokes. And for that, I found it really useful. As you can probably tell, that description is so different than this. This is definitely not for me. Honestly, I question who this would be for. And I also think in terms of like the logistics here, you know when you have a lipstick and you've like worn it a few times and then all of a sudden you've kind of lost that like sharp point to it, that's what I picture happening with this. Like at some point, is it always gonna be flat or am I gonna have to kind of like push it down to create the shape again? Do they like, I don't know. Part of me appreciates that it's kind of different and they tried to do something out of the box, but I just don't know. 
how well it was executed, but I could be totally wrong. This is another one where I'm like, let me know if you want me to review this. Maybe I should. Maybe it would be helpful for me to try it out and see if it performs the way I'm expecting it to because I'm not expecting it to perform well, but let me know if you would like to see that. Okay, Janessa Myricks. You know I love the Yummy Skin Primer. I'm wearing it today under my base, and she came out with the Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint. Now, funny enough, the other foundation in this line I've heard horrible things about, and I've gone back and forth. I'm like, part of me wants to buy it because I love the primer so much that it makes me think I should like the corresponding foundation, but so many people don't. So now that this has launched, I'm like, wait, is this actually the answer to that instead? Is this something that might be more up my alley? The coverage level is light and it's also described as radiant. Typically, I prefer something a little bit more of a soft matte that tends to be my preference. So I don't know if the finish of this would even really be up my alley, but if you've tried this, let me know your thoughts. Okay, I'm gonna pop this on the screen. I'm not gonna tell you who it's from, but I want you to guess what brand launched, launched these. Because I was kind of asking myself the same thing as I was scrolling through trend mood, which I will say. I, when I was filming this video or this like series a lot more consistently, I was definitely keeping up with trend mood and like hot fire makeup, those two Instagram accounts. But I, I haven't really filmed this style of video in a while. So I haven't really kept up with those pages. So I felt like this was fun for me. I was like, wait, what's coming out right now? I feel a little bit out of the loop. Like I keep up with launches, of course, but I don't, I am haven't been as like meticulous about it as I have been in the past when I was specifically filming new makeup videos like this. But when I saw this, when I was scrolling by this, I was like, who the heck is that from? I kind of thought Sunday, right? No, not Sunday, Riley, um, Summer Fridays. I was like, is that like a complexion product from Summer Fridays? Like I could see that. Even like Ilia maybe, but no, this is Smashbox. And I guess the name on these little Concealer sticks probably could have tipped me off because it says halo and I know they have their halo line and this is I'm assuming Intended to be something very similar to like a YSL Touche Clot uh, Or like the elf flawless brightening concealers where it has that like click up brush applicator lighter coverage levels now These just launched in Europe. So unsure if we will get them here in the US This makes a lot of sense to me because we have been seeing more of a push towards like lighter coverage products also just concealers that are a little bit more lightweight, hydrating, less heavy on the skin. So I think this makes a lot of sense. And I wonder, like I haven't necessarily been super excited about a Smashbox launch in a while, but I think this feels a little bit more on trend. I like the packaging. So it kind of has me looking out for Smashbox for future launches. Okay, Too Faced. This launch feels like the 2023 version of like the Unicorn Collection. Like I'm underwhelmed by it, but it just feels so quintessential Too Faced to me. This is the Comic Crush Collection. You have this eyeshadow palette that looks like so many of their other eyeshadow palettes, but with like a pink and a kind of a green shade thrown in there. Honestly, part of me is like, oh, this color story looks a little bit different for Too Faced, but then I'm like, no, it doesn't. And this looks like what they would launch around holiday season. They also included the Moon Crush highlighters that I actually think look pretty, but I don't know. This launch feels so random to me. Also, I think it's like so bold to call this collection like cosmic when it feels a little bit like lackluster. I think with that theme, they could have really leaned into some like duochromes, more iridescent shades, like multi-chromes. Like there is a lot of potential with a cosmic themed collection. And this is like, okay, this is just kind of typical Too Faced. You could have told me this collection had any other theme and I would have believed you. These feel like they could be a dupe to the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize from what I'm seeing here. Now these are from Moira. I have not tried this brand, but I get so many recommendations to try it. And these are kind of like single individual pot eyeshadows that appear to have a very moussey texture and they reach out for $7.50, which is nuts. Now, the only thing making me think maybe it's not really a Charlotte Tilbury dupe is they describe it as a shimmery finish and looking at some of the swatches and application photos, I can see more of that sparkle there. Whereas I find the Charlotte Tilbury ones to be a little bit more satin and less like glitter forward, but the texture and consistency of these feel very similar to that. And I've been surprised over the years that we haven't really seen any brand try to dupe that product. I mean, I have seen products that are similar, but nothing that's in that moussey texture. Like a lot of brands that come out with individual shadows like this that I think are maybe meant to emulate that, they tend to be a lot more spongy in the packaging. Whereas I want to see like an affordable option that has this more whipped moussey texture. So I'm intrigued by these. While the marketing photos of this are questionable, 
I would like this video to be monetized, so I am not gonna dive into that, but this is the newest launched from Rode, which is Hailey Bieber's brand, and I'm actually kind of intrigued by this. This is like a skin milk. This is the type of product a few years ago I thought was completely unnecessary in my skincare routine, but now that I really rely on tretinoin to do like the bulk of the work in my skincare routine, most of the other products in my routine, I'm really looking for hydration. So I never used to care about like an essence or any sort of like hydrating serum like that. Like, I mean, I won't say I didn't care about them, but they weren't essential in my routine the way that they are now. Now I love any sort of like a milky serum or essence or hydrating glowy liquidy product like this. Like I love these types of products. And I think the price point on this is a bit more approachable, like $29, it's not cheap, but I, I would not have been surprised if it had been priced even around like the $39 range. Now it is currently sold out, but from what I can see on the ingredient list, like it looks promising. It seems like something that would be really hydrating to the skin, so I'm intrigued by this. Oh, okay, so update on KKW. I have been debating if I do like a rise and fall on this brand. I have done a rise and fall about Kylie Cosmetics. Let me know if you would like to see one dedicated to KKW, but we have gotten the announcement that Kim Kardashian's makeup brand is coming back, but not really the same way. So it's no longer going to be KKW Beauty. She will be launching makeup again this year under Skin, which is like her skincare brand. And she's saying she'll have like perfumes, makeup, everything. Now I'm curious to see how different the makeup brand is going to look. Like will any of the products carry over? Will we see similar packaging? My assumption would be for the most part, no. I have a video I can leave linked down below where I go a little bit more in depth about the lawsuit actually because when um, KKW and Kylie Cosmetics were acquired by Cody, there was actually a lawsuit with their manufacturer um, because they didn't want the formulations to go to Cody. So they had to reformulate everything. So that's why Kylie Cosmetics did this full like rebrand. They claimed it was for a different reason, but it's because they had to reformulate every product. That's part of the reason KKW kind of went away. So my assumption is that if we do see the brand return, there's a high likelihood that the products will look very different. They probably won't necessarily be the same. Well, they definitely won't be the same formulations. The packaging might look different, especially because it's going to be under the skin line and like packaging from skin is so different than KKW. It's like very minimal, geometric, also, the price points are so different. KKW, I mean, it wasn't drugstore, but it definitely was like high-end price points. Whereas a lot of the products under skin sit at that luxury price tag. Like the face cream is $85, the eye cream is 75, the hyaluronic acid serum is 90. I don't, you know what needs to spend $90 on a hyaluronic acid serum. So I can't say this is something I'm like personally super excited about, but I am intrigued. Like I will definitely be watching, I'm curious what direction they will take the makeup component of skin. I wonder if they will return to kind of that like very millennial pink aesthetic that they had previously or if they'll stick with more of this very neutral gray vibe that they have with skin. Kayali just launched a new fragrance. They have the Wedding Collection and this smells, well, okay, wait. I haven't, I have not, I have, I have not smelled this yet. What I mean is, this description in my head seems like it would smell phenomenal. So where I'm going with this is I want to smell this. The keynotes in this are white musk, cedarwood, and sandalwood. This sounds like it's gonna smell delicious. I don't need any more perfumes. You watch me do a perfume declutter in one of my recent vlogs, but at the very least, like I wanna smell this. I, I need to know how this smells. Okay, that was a lot of fun. I, I haven't done this type of video in a while, but I really did enjoy kind of talking through those. Let me know if this is something you'd like me to bring back on a more consistent basis. Also, let me know your thoughts on all the products we discussed, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.